Over the past couple of years, we've talked to a number of people who have asked questions related to their mortgages, refinancing, and whether now is a good time or waiting till later. So today, we wanted to spend some time walking through mortgages, refinancing, what some of those important terms would actually look like, and how you can make a good determination for you and your family about what to do next. My name is Trevor Meyer. I'm a financial planner here at Financial Design Studio, and I'm excited to walk you through many things related to your mortgages and refinancing, and what are the things you should be considering as you're trying to figure out what makes the most sense for you and your family. So what is a mortgage? A mortgage is really just a loan against any piece of real property. And by real property, I just mean land or a house or something constructed on a building that's not gonna move, right? So mortgage equals a loan on a house. Generally speaking, the only people that can get a mortgage are people that actually own the property itself, right? So if we're renters, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to get a mortgage against that property because we don't own it. Now, one of the first things associated with your mortgage is your payment. This is really just how much we're paying the bank each and every month in exchange for them lending us the money to actually purchase the property. Another big term is what's the rate, the interest rate that we're paying the bank. This is oftentimes somewhere between two and a half all the way up to five and a half percent is what we're seeing now, right? One of the most important considerations that you have to be mindful of as you're evaluating whether it makes sense to refinance it is how much this interest rate might actually be. For years and years and years, we have been in what's called a very low interest rate environment. For the past couple of years, we've been in an ultra low interest rate environment. However, as 2022 has kicked up, inflation has picked up, these interest rates are beginning to climb and refinancing makes it more and more challenging to make it a financially wise decision. That said, it doesn't mean that it's for sure not a wise decision. Every situation is different and it's important to look at all the considerations with your financial plan to figure out what's gonna make the most sense for you. So as we look to a refinance, one of the things I think about is, well, how much can we refinance for? One of the things we could do is we could just refinance our existing loan balance against our existing home into a new loan. Now, why would we wanna do this? If interest rates are lower than our current interest rate, this might make sense to do. The thing we just have to work through is to figure out what are the closing costs going to be for that new loan in exchange for us getting that new loan and getting rid of our old one. If those closing costs are minimal and small, somewhere around the mark of like a thousand or maybe $2,000, and we're saving at least an eighth of a point or a quarter of a point over a 20 or 30 year period, that could make a lot of sense to take advantage of if we're only paying one or $2,000 to do that. Now, unfortunately, uh, as we've seen interest rates rise, one of the things that we have to be mindful of is these closing costs, while they'll be consistent, we may not be getting lower rates. We might just be getting uh, higher rates or substantially equal rates. In that case, a refinance does not make sense. But what happens if, as we've seen this year, housing prices are going way up, which is something that has been mindful for us and a lot of our clients throughout this year. Let's say we had a loan on a home that was $150,000 and our home used to be worth $250,000, but now that home is worth $400,000. One of the important considerations here is this $150,000 on a $200,000 and $50,000 home represents about a 60% loan, the loan amount, to the value of the home. This is what's called loan to value or LTV. Generally speaking, a bank will only lend up to 80% for a loan to value, right? So if the home value was maybe $200,000, we'd be encroaching on that $80,000 loan to value and we have to be mindful of that because the bank is not going to continue lending us more money if the home value is not also significantly up as well. But as we mentioned in our example, our home value isn't 250 anymore, it's now 400. Well, this represents about a 37 or call it 38% loan to value. So we have a lot more room associated with our loan to the value of the home. Now, how much will the bank be willing to lend us now? We've mentioned before that they would be willing to lend us 
generally about 80%. Well, now what is that new amount that the bank might be willing to lend us? If we just take 400,000 and we apply 80% of that value, we get to $320,000. If we look at this 320, recognize we've already loaned out 150,000 of it. We now have $170,000 of more room to take a loan out against on. Now this is what would be considered a cash out refinance. In other words, we would be taking cash out of the value of our home if it made sense for us to do that. When we're looking at a cash out refinance, some of the things we need to be thinking about are, again, what is the interest rate gonna be? We're looking at interest rates of about five to 6% right now. So somewhere about five and a half percent would be quite common that could be significantly higher than our current interest rate. And because we're also taking out a larger loan, what else goes up? Our payment also goes up. So we have to be mindful of this from a cash flow perspective, from a financial perspective, thinking of the interest rate, and also what makes sense for you and your family. Do we wanna load up on debt in your home or are there other alternatives that we can look at instead? Now let's say we're, we're looking to build out an addition on the home, or maybe do a, a significant kitchen remodel. This is where a cash out refinance might make sense. Because even at five and a half percent, that interest rate is likely significantly lower than a credit card or maybe a HELOC. So that's another term that we haven't talked too deeply about, but a HELOC is simply just uh, a home equity line of credit. Think of it as a credit card against your home's value. A HELOC's interest rate is generally speaking not a locked rate. It's a variable rate. This is going to change as market rates go up and down. That's where a cash out refinance might actually make a lot more sense. Because if we picked up a cash out refinance with a fixed rate mortgage, we know that we've locked in whatever interest rate for however long we have the mortgage for, whether it's 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, any time interval in between. Now those are options if we wanted to take advantage of some home improvement. But what if instead we just wanted some extra spending money or maybe we wanted to go on a vacation that we've been holding off for a number of years. Another thing we have to be mindful of is generally speaking, interest rates or the interest that we pay on a home mortgage is tax deductible. This means if we itemize our taxes, we can include the interest that we pay on any mortgage so long as it's directly related to the purchase or the improvement of a home mortgage, or of your home, excuse me. Now, again, if we instead took these funds and went on a Disney vacation or uh, just set aside some funds for spending money, that would not be tax deductible. So your record keeping gets significantly more challenging because some of that mortgage might still be tax deductible, some of it may not. Now let's say all of this is a moot point. Instead of actually taking money out of our home and leveraging the home equity, we actually wanna get rid of our mortgage as quickly as possible. Again, we can always look at refinancing. We can refinance to a shorter time period if we need. But the thing to keep in mind there is we're gonna have closing costs of at least a thousand, maybe 2000, perhaps even higher. Instead, what if we have a low interest rate on our mortgage? What can we do? Well, we can pay it down early. There's nothing stopping you from treating maybe your 30 year mortgage like a 15 year mortgage. So maybe your payment is $3,500 a month. What if we make payments of $4,000 a month? We can run an analysis, look at the math, and see how much more quickly are we actually going to pay down our $150,000 mortgage. That's not only going to save on cash flow, but it's also going to significantly save on interest. Because as we're making extra principal payments, we now have a less principal balance that we're charging or getting charged interest on with the loan. So it's a win-win in multiple cases there if we're looking to reduce our debt load as much as possible. So that's kind of a quick walkthrough of many things associated with mortgages, refinancing, what might make sense to do, and what you can do going forward. 
If you've got questions or you're interested in learning more, we've got a lot of videos all about finances and financial planning. We'd encourage you to check those out. Feel free to subscribe to this channel. We would love to have you here watching these videos. And if you've got even more deep questions or you want to figure out how someone can walk alongside with you, reach out, let us know, and we would love to see how we can help you. Thank you.